So today we're going to be looking at five tools that don't really have a productive purpose, but are still kind of neat nonetheless. So things like, say, C matrix, things that you just run because they kind of fill up some terminal space and you kind of want something to go in the background. So the reason why I'm doing five of these is because with no amount of YouTuber energy could I stretch any of these tools out to be eight minutes long. So you know what? Five of them, that's much less time for all of them, and it's plenty of time to cover each tool. So the first tool that we have is called GenAct. So this basically is a activity generator. So I'll just run it and show you what I mean. So if we run this, basically it's going to give you some nonsense activity that's going on. So right now, I don't know, it's supposed to be creating zip files. If we run it again, it's going to be a crypto miner this time. If we run it again, this time it's going to be installing some nonsense packages. And again, this time it's going to be doing something with hex values. It doesn't really matter what it's supposed to be doing. But basically, this is just a way to create fake looking activity. So you could use this if you're trying to upload something to Unix porn. You need something to actually fill up your terminal space. Or maybe you're trying to pretend like you're actually working and you just want to have something going on in your screen that makes it look like you're doing something even when you're doing absolutely nothing productive. So you might have noticed that once the first thing that it was showing finished, then it would go on to a second thing. So basically this application is broken down into several modules. So if we just run genact-l, that will actually list out all of the modules. So we can actually specify which one we want to use by using the dash M argument. So if we do genact dash M and then let's have the botnet one going. And basically this is going to be like our fake botnet basically. So if you want to have a specific type of activity going on, this is how you'd go about doing it. And you can also specify the speed with the dash S argument, but keep in mind, let's let's keep the botnet one going. Keep in mind that the faster that you have this going, the more CPU intensive this is going to be. So let's just set this to 10. And as we're going to see, it's not really going to be that big of a deal on my system just because I've got a pretty beefy system, but you can very easily overwhelm it by going up to something like a thousand, for example. It seems to be doing just fine right now, but I did notice the off-camera did kind of ramp up the performance usage. So that's pretty much everything for GenAct. So let's move on to the second one, which is called Term Fireworks, which is basically going to do as it sounds, which is generate fireworks for your terminal. So if we just go and run this one now, this basically creates fireworks with asterisks. And if you want to go and specify a specific seed to actually use, because Basically, these fireworks are going to be randomly generated. So if we just run this again, so quit out of that, just control C, run that again. And we're going to notice that we have a very different pattern this time. And every single time that we run it, it's going to be a different pattern. So if there's a specific pattern you actually want to see, you can go and pass in the dash dash seed argument and then specify the seed that you want to use. So I'm going to use 9876544. 321 because I am very creative. And that's basically what we're going to see from that one. Now, if you're interested in the way this one actually works, the developer actually did a blog post about it. So if you want to go and say, re-implement this in another language, because this is actually written in Rust. So if you want to take this project and then, I don't know, re-implement it in Go or something like that as a way to actually learn Go or re-implement it in Python or something like that, just so you can learn that language. This basically describes how everything actually works. So have a read through this and... Basically, it explains how all of the phases of the fireworks work as well. So it gives you a pretty good idea about everything that's actually going on. I'm not going to read through it in this video, but I did just want to mention it just in case it sounds interesting for you to see. The next one we're going to look at has tons of implementations, the exact same thing. So we're going to be looking at something called Blockish Doomfire. So basically, this is a implementation of the Doomfire, but done inside of your terminal. So let's go into Blockish fire not blockish doom fire my bad and i haven't actually installed this so we're just going to run it with cargo so cargo run dash dash release and basically here it is so obviously if you zoom out a bit it's going to uh okay firstly it's going to break but if you zoom out and then run it Obviously, because it's doing it with Unicode blocks, the smaller the Unicode blocks actually are, the higher the quality is actually going to be. So let's actually zoom out as much as I can and try to run it. And, okay, it's going to be a bit slow. Now, it's not the most efficient implementation of, the, uh, of Doomfire, as you can probably tell, but 
it is still one that does exist. Let's uh let's zoom in a bit to make it so it can run. There we go. So it can look pretty good if you zoom out quite a bit. Now the developer of this specific code base didn't actually write a blog post about this, but there are tons and tons of blog posts out there of how to actually implement the uh, the Doomfire. So if you want to go and read through one of those, then I will leave a link to it down below because it's actually a fairly simple algorithm. So it was sort of just a coincidence, the first three applications we looked at were written in Rust. Rust is just a very popular language right now, that's sort of just what happens. The next one we're going to look at is written in Go, and this one is called Clock, I guess? Basically, it's called Clock, but it's spelt with a, uh, a Q at the start, and the name of the project is called TTY Clock. Basically, it's going to tell you what the time is, but it's going to tell you it in words. Now, I don't know why anyone would think this is a good idea, but I don't know, the developer sort of liked it. I'll show you what it looks like when the color scheme isn't sort of messed up because I don't actually have my uh, terminal colors set up in a way that makes this work as nicely as it could. So over on the GitHub page here, basically it's gonna have a wall of letters here and then basically it's gonna show you what the time is in words. But my color for these letters here is the same as my background color, so it doesn't work as nicely as it could. Now, this was actually inspired by a really weird art project. I guess you'd call it an art project. I don't know what you'd call it. Basically, you can get a physical version of this as well, and you can have it on your wall, or as you can see here, you can have it on your wrist. Now, I don't know why anyone would want this on their wrist. This seems incredibly difficult to read and way slower to read than just... I don't know, even an analog clock. A digital clock is just fine on your wrist, but even an analog clock on your wrist is still quicker than reading these really tiny letters. But, hey, someone wanted it in their terminal as well, so they went and made it for themselves. Don't get me wrong, this watch is kind of cool, but it is really, really impractical. Now, the final project we're going to look at is something that most people have probably heard of already, but I felt like this video wouldn't be complete without including it. So the last one that we have is called C Matrix, which I'm sure that everyone watching this video has already heard of. But if you haven't, it's basically an implementation of the scrolling font that you see in the Matrix movies for your terminal. And for some reason, even though it has ways to configure everything through options, they decided to also include some key bindings as well. So these are the options to go and modify everything. But if we go into the application and we press shift and then one of the number keys, it will actually change the uh, the colors of the, the symbols. So one is red, two is green, three, four, five, six, seven. And there's supposed to be black in here somewhere, but I'm not actually seeing it. Now doing this is incredibly CPU intensive, so it does a couple of things to basically speed it up. But if you want to go and throw that all out the window, you can go and enable asynchronous scrolling. So right now, as you can see, all of the lines are moving at the exact same pace. If we go and enable async scrolling though, some of them will be scrolling faster than others. So basically each of these lines is scrolling independent of all of the other lines. And obviously this is going to be uh, much more intensive to actually run. And you can go and modify the speed as well. And this is where it gets really bad. So if we press one, one is this fast, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then Zero is like this, and uh, yeah, okay, it seems like my CPU is handling it just fine. You're probably going to notice in just a second, there we go, my CPU temp is going to start rising because this is quite difficult for the computer to actually handle. So I'm going to slot back down, and that's much better now. If you have bold fonts working properly in your terminal, it will actually introduce bold characters inside of these lines, and if you want to have random bold, which is what the default setting is, you can press B. Capital B will make everything bold, but as you can see, I don't actually have bold fonts working properly. And then if you press N, that will then disable all bold fonts. So besides configuring it to look exactly the way that you want, really the only option that I would actually care about is the dash S option, which basically makes it so it acts as a screensaver. So by default, to quit out of it, you have to press Q. When it's in screensaver mode though, pressing any key will basically close it. So if I go and press say my up arrow, then it will close. If I press, I don't know, seven, it will close. Basically, anything will close it. Now I did notice that during that really fast scrolling, the video got really compressed. So I will go and mess around my OBS settings to make sure that doesn't happen again next time. I think it might be a bitrate issue, but I'm not 100% sure. Now, before I get a comment asking, hey, where did you find most of these applications? Because I know that most people have probably heard about C Matrix, but the others are 
very small projects, some of them only have like one star. Basically, when I search for video topics on places like Reddit, you find lots of these really, really small projects that people are advertising because they're trying to learn a new language or things like that. So I thought I might as well give a spotlight to some of these that I couldn't really cover in any other sort of video. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Donald, Yoa Kim, Kulbinian, Andrew Craig, Nathan, Monster, Chico Bento, Joseph Pidity, Road, Tony, Brennan, John, Marek, Mikkel, Nate, Dog, Nephite, Poe, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to go on support, I've worked on the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, leave and pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere you listen to podcasts. And this channel is available on Library, Odyssey, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.